All right. Today we're going to talk about concept net. This one here. The thing is, um, I, so this is an open source multilingual knowledge graph. If you look up something like laptop, it will show you common sense knowledge, like it's on your desk and things like that. And then it's making, um, it's running Flask server in the back end. I don't know exactly the server is. You make simple HTTP queries like that, and it will give you the answers. So this is where, where the server is located. And this thing is often down. The server is often down. So um, I thought I can run this locally. The build process is here. In the concept net official repo, how you build it and everything. And there are a lot of things to install. So I thought I can take a Docker file and then try to, so I can, you know, you can just Docker pull in, get the minimal installation so they can get things going. So there I made a repo. I'll um, put the link down below. So it's gonna tell you how to run this. All right, so we have to first have to pull this Docker image. I already pulled it, so it's not so big. about 2.5 gigs and when you pull it from the web the compressed image is about 1 gig so but the data is you have to download data and that's going to take a long time okay let's see how it's done and second we're going to run this Docker container and it's going to run this um, postgres database whatever so it's, if in case you're Wondering uh, how I wrote this Docker file, you can take a look here. All right, let's uh, open up CSH or Bash if you want, whatever you prefer. And it's there. And here I've only already cloned the concept net repo. And then we're gonna Postgres is already running. It's already running there. So, um, and then we have to build. Uh, create a database called concept net 5. Okay, that's, that's just in case, let's see. Yeah, it's built there. All right, so that looks good. And now we have to build, download the entire concept of data and everything, which is huge. It's gonna take a long time. You need at least 30 gigs of available RAM, 300 gigs of free disk space, and time bandwidth to download 24 gigs of raw data. All right, let's start this. So, um, this gonna take a long time, right? It took me like half a day or something for me. It highly depends on, you know, how fast your your uh, network is and everything. So, when this is done, I'll get back to you. All right, so um, building is done. Let's go check it out. I think it was here. Okay, I turned it off. I'm gonna start it again. What the hell? Oh, there you go. Alright, I started it. Let's see if it's running. There we go. Gonna start there and then. Um, get a log file. So I was, I was logging the. Um, Build time. So the building took about four and a half hours. It's not as long as I thought. Anyways, the building is done. So now what we're gonna do, we are gonna go to the directory called web and then we're gonna install the, um, the web app. It's a Flask app. It's done and we're gonna start the Flask API server. There you go. So, since we started with um, network host, we can um, access this on our web browser. All right, there it is. So now it's complete. So now, what we can do? So we used to um, use this, right? And then type that. And these is the we're making HTTP queries here requests. We can do the same here, except that the server address 
can be replaced with the server address that's running out running on our local machine. See, there we go. Let's see the server. Um, yeah, that's what we got. What it got, and it's outputting the results. How nice! Slight difference is that this renders in nicely, but this just renders a JSON file. But that's fine because our point is to get data. So this is what we can do. I explained it here. All right. So just have to replace the server address with our own server IP and a port number. I also made a simple client. You can take a look here. It's a really simple client. Um, so we can run on Python. So now I'm not on Docker. Just use any of your Python. Okay. What do I use? Let's do that. You know, just, just like any other Python file, it's, there are not many requirements. You know, but just in case, let me start from the beginning. And then, let's see what has to be installed to call this client. Okay, please install requests. Alright, that's all you have to install. So. So be sure to install this. Or well, request is all you need. I'm sure it doesn't even require a specific version. Install that. Let me write it down here. Take a look at python.py. So that's it. So making a there it takes two arguments server address. So we can either use this, then it's gonna make the request to the the uh, concept net server, or we can use our own server address because it's running here, right? Running locally. Let's see. It's actually not consuming much RAM. I thought it's going to consume much more RAM, but um, not so much. It's way less than I thought. All right. All right, and also this client, you can do another argument is object. So. What this does is that um, making a query, we're interested in, so that's the head we're looking for, the object. It can be baseball, person, laptop, whatever. And the relation is location. So this outputs possible locations of baseball that, have, that people have um, contributed to this data. Person can do that. It also outputs really fast because everything is running locally now. All we can we do? Water. Water works, but if you give you something wrong, it's probably not going to output something. Full bar bass. There's nothing, right? So you got to give some something that makes sense. Webcam is not there either. Phone. Phone is there. All right. So that's what it is. And then uh, when you're done, you can just uh, turn off the machine. I turn off the server. You're still within Docker, so you can turn that off as well. And then let's get out of this here too. So um, still running Docker container. We can kill it. Okay. Now it's done. We kill the Docker container, and it's all good. But then it's still there. You know, don't remove this because we download all the data and everything. So now later on, you want to go back there and then turn this on again. You can start Docker container again. This is the name we gave to the container, which is ConceptNet5. There you go. Now we start Postgres and all the stuff. But, but it didn't start the web server yet. So it's running there. 
but now we want to run the API server, right? We can actually make this to one line. So it's going to run um, interactive in the working directory. We're going to specify this because that's where the concept net web API uh, we're going to locate it, locate it at. So we're going to call. We're going to run this directly now. And there you go. And now it's running. So you can do the same thing. You can run. You can open open this up, and that thing is going to work, right? The Python client is going to work too. There you go, right? So it's all good. It's working all fine. Everything running locally. I believe this is the simplest setup they can find. And um, again, you're done. Turn it off. Or turn off. Turn off Docker container as well. And now we're good. All right. I believe this is the simplest uh, installation step. Looks like a lot, but uh, I Dockerized everything, all the necessary uh, components. And the good thing is you don't have to worry about the Postgres, Postgres database. This was a bit of a headache for me because it was the first time me uh, getting into this. So I did this hack so that uh, creating database, it's easier without any um, stuff. All right, so um, please, um, if you have any questions, just let me know, and then feel free to um, contact me. All right, bye-bye. Uh, yeah, I forgot to tell you guys how big uh, this Docker image is after downloading the data and building it and everything. See here, it's about 222 gigs. Just to know it's big, so we have to have enough storage for that.